Hello and welcome back. This is video three of our five video series on formulating within the Ink Formulation 6 software. This video we are going to briefly go over adding substrate to the database and calculating a roughness factor. We'll get started by just logging in here. Now if you recall or if you recently watched video one and video two, what we did is we created a formulation, a PMS 232, we then assigned that uh, formulation some spectral data. We created a palette formulation from that, and then a thickness object at a 4.5 BCM. We're going to go ahead and recall that formulation that we used in our job 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 folder, and open it up here. Okay. And there we go. So, what we're going to do here is use this formulation, a known formulation, to again save a RC1S from FASON into the system for later use with formulations. We're going to use our 232 formula that was rolled out our, uh, at a 4.5 BCM that was calculated. Okay, And what we're going to do is calculate the roughness factor. What that is, is simply absorption. The higher the percentage of roughness, the more absorption your substrate has. So a film substrate should be zero, should have no absorption, should all sit on the top of the substrate. Whereas an uncoated substrate would be higher percentages of absorption. Okay, so to begin we're going to go ahead and database substrates. We currently don't have any substrates saved in our database here, so click new and give it a designation. Coded one side. I did this at a 4.5 BCM any other notes, additional descriptions that you want to add? Perhaps the press, perhaps the individual who did it, things like that. Okay. It wants me to take a measurement over white and over black. If I did this rollout over a Netta card, or I had a black tile or something that was consistently black, um, I could go ahead and take that measurement over black. Thankfully, it doesn't make us do both. I take it right over white. I'm going to go ahead and take that measurement. So this is the substrate over my white tile. Nothing printed on it, just as is. Okay, I'm going to skip doing it over black because it's not necessary and go through the rest of the settings here. I'm not using a filter. This is paper, cardboard, and opaque film or an opaque film. The other options are metalized or transparent film. This is a coated substrate. Of course, the other option is uncoated. And then this is what we want to calculate, the roughness factor, the absorption of our substrate. I'm going to calculate that. We are using the high strength toner. And we're going to go ahead and take a measurement of our 232 at a 4.5 BCM. Now, it doesn't allow you here to pull the palette formulation, which I find a little bit odd. Hopefully it will be in the next update of the ink formulation 6 from x right? But it's okay. You see why I pulled up the formulation here of our 232 so I can basically read off of it. So I pull my components that I use to create the formulation. And now I simply give the percentages. 83.57 Rubine at 1.26 Rhodamine at 13.72 and purple at 1.44%. Okay. These are grams, but that doesn't much matter. And then here we want to make sure that we choose our thickness object that we calibrated in video 2. Okay, and that's it. We just press OK. It gives us a roughness factor of 5%. So there we go. Now we know the approximate absorption of our substrate that we're formulating on. I'm going to click OK to save. Here it is, C1S 4.5 BCM, and we're going to close. Now, we're going to go ahead and move forward, just a quick formulation, show you where it shows up here. So, substrate from database, here's our C1S 4.5 BCM. The more we add, the more, of course, we can use to formulate with. To, be, to create the most accurate starting formulations, we always want to give the data, uh, the database, as much information as possible. So that starts with creating a very good assortment. 
Then it moves on to creating the thickness objects, the volume of ink that you're putting to the substrate, and of course, the substrate that you're printing with. Okay? And that will conclude video three. Thank you for joining us, and I hope to see you in the next video.